Hi Sam. Um, Hi. Could you? I came down to Melbourne um, to find out what the fuck is going on up here. Um, could you just tell me step by step what were the events that led up to finally resigning from the WikiLeaks Party at National Council? Uh, well, it was a decision post the preference debacle, obviously. Mm -hmm. I guess it really began uh, the day that we had to finalise the preferences. We had many meetings with the council that day, almost continuous meetings as things changed. Mm -hmm. At one point, the right-wing bloc, uh, including Shooters and Fishers and Australia First in New South Wales and Family First in Victoria, were being considered, uh, as was the ALP, as were the Greens. So things shifted over the course of the day and we'd commissioned expert advice from Charles Richardson around what we should consider in each state. So the council, uh, I know I certainly was using that as guidance for my choice and it's quite detailed but there were particular things that had to happen to really make it worthwhile putting far right wing people ahead of those that were more aligned to our aspirations and values. And so there was concern? Yes, and there was, there was good robust debate and questioning around mathematics. Uh, was this valuable? And I, I guess towards the end of the day what it came down to is, you know, would preferencing these groups in New South Wales and Victoria actually uh, be, uh, in terms of number of votes, something that would benefit the party at the risk of alienating our supporters and our base. Would it damage the very brand? <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> and so in the end, I mean, I, I think really, you know, just to get to the crux of it, the council, the majority of the council, voted down the far right, including Shooters and Fishers, in New South Wales, and voted down the deal with Family First, and we reached agreement that the Greens would be the first of the majors and that the smaller minnow parties in between for us to gather preferences would be based on, on value alignment, basically. Wasn't that what Greg Barnes kind of indicated a couple of weeks earlier, that there would be an alignment in, in terms of policy? Yes, he did, but he was also talking with Family First. Family First actually broke from that block to try and uh, still cut a deal with us in Victoria. So, uh, you know, there was no factions at this point. There was a uh, constitutionally and democratically appointed body, founding body, and that body, the majority of the council, voted as per the directive email that went out, which was the Greens first of the majors and then the far right block including Family First in Victoria, after that. So after a very long and arduous day, we worked really hard to make the right choices based on very rational, practical matters and solid expert advice uh, from Charles Richardson, who Greg Barnes made a phone call to before the final meeting of the council to discuss the fact that the Greens were offering 100% of their vote, which previously they were offering a split ticket in Victoria, but that means no deal with Family First. And, you know, I heard that conversation and Charles basically agreed because of the uniqueness of creating a party around particular values, that that was probably a pretty good deal and we should go with the Greens and ensure the longevity of the party's base in Victoria. And New South Wales, we decided at the vote that the shooters, the deal with the shooters and the far right block, there just wasn't enough evidence to suggest that it was worth the potential damage to people who believed in our values. So, yeah, then we woke up on Sunday morning and 
everything was upside down and, and back to front and um, it was a real shock. Uh, in, in Victoria, Kaz and I submitted the ballot paper. Uh, so we knew Victoria was as per instructed. At that point we didn't know what had happened, but there was certainly a lot of email surprise uh, by members of the National Council, including myself, Kaz, Dan, Nidge and others. Uh, so it became quite clear that the minority voters on the council that were interested in putting family first in Victoria, if that had happened, uh, what was going on in New South Wales was a mere slice of the backlash that would have come to Victoria uh, being the most progressive state. So I guess as the events unfolded from the Sunday to the Wednesday, we were trying desperately to understand what had taken place. We were being shut down and told to move on. We were saying that we had just split our base and that we need to fix this and actually walk the values that this party is claiming it will do in the Senate. And the best way to do that was to clearly hold an immediate independent review and look at what went on. So you're trying to fix things, really? Yes, of course. Of, co of course. So while we were trying to um, make sure that that was something that would take place, it became quite clear to us that potentially the democratic process had been subverted, therefore the need for an immediate independent review. Mm -hmm. But ha can I just ask you about the public reaction and what about the reaction of people like Scott Ludlum and the Socialist Alliance who'd helped WikiLeaks so much? What was their reaction like? What was the general reaction like? Was it aligned with what was happening from people who were directing you to move on? No, not at all. Uh, the, the response was furious and vicious. And the interesting thing is that, uh, you know, we've, we've subsequently to this situation been called a front for the Greens, which is completely untrue. What I care about is that we made an agreement in part of the, this GVT ticket to preference the Greens in WA. And the reason for that is because Senator Scott Ludlam is the only senator who has been doing the work and fighting for us as Australians, as, as citizens, for my children's rights, not because he's the member of another political party. Uh, I mean, this man is our most valuable asset. He's our, he's our last defence against this massive global surveillance state in this country and he's also defended Julian's rights that's that's true so of course it is in our interest as a movement as people that actually are seekers of change and truth that he should stay in the parliament regardless of your political persuasion that man is an asset to this country yeah. So it's not just bleeding heart or no. I'll pat your back, oh, you pat God. mine. No. Far from no. Yeah. No. And I think that anyone that has been involved in in the uh, movement that has come out of the revelations of WikiLeaks and this desire for truth and transparency and, and change, anyone that knows what's going on in this country knows that Scott Ludlam is the only person inside the parliament fighting for us yeah. as as people. And so... That was pretty devastating. Yeah, so all that came before you had this problem with getting the independent review launched. Yeah. Yeah. Your attempt to reconcile with the voters. Yeah. Yeah? Yeah. So what happened then? So the Wednesday morning, the statement went out from the party promising an immediate independent review. By that stage, all were considering resigning, and by this time we'd already lost our WA volunteer team, 
the London WA coordinator, one of the national volunteer coordinators had resigned and the other one left the same day or the next day after us. So... What happened in Victoria? Did you lose anyone there, any support? Oh, oh, I loads. We, we lost a lot of people, yeah, immediately, who were very keen to send messages that we'd lost their support in various forms. Uh, you know, some of it quite ugly and some of it quite justified. Yeah. Some people were in tears and some people were very angry and some people were happy with Victoria's ballot paper. So they were kind of like, well, if we just focus on Victoria. All of them wanted an explanation and to understand what had happened. And all of them wanted us to reissue digital versions of how the paper should have been submitted in the other states. So, transparency. Yes, transparency, accountability, justice. What happened to democracy? Wasn't that on the, the site at one time? What happened to democracy? Was that replaced by justice? Or yes. The, okay. the feeling was that democracy is such a bastardised concept in, in, in our current uh, world that perhaps the aim should be better suited towards justice, which is interesting because that's been Wacker's uh, theme for since our conception, which is the goal is justice and the method is transparency uh, because the democratic process is so uh, compromised. So, uh, so anyway, uh, the Wednesday morning we finally got the statement out about the independent review after I'm sure everybody within within the party, whether here or New South Wales or WA, I think everybody was under attack. People seemed more satisfied and accepting once we acknowledged that we were going to address the, the situation. Which was, had been called an administrative error at that stage? Correct. Which, how can you do that when you haven't done an independent review and when there is changing stories and evidence to suggest otherwise? Which was problematic for us who were aware of this situation. So by the Wednesday, I, I guess, we got the independent review out and some of the people that resigned were... Well, the announcement. The, we got the announcement of the independent review out. And some of the people that ended up resigning that day were still just done and, and were feeling like they should resign anyway. And we, I guess we kind of rallied them to stay with us, to stay in the party, to stay on the council so that we could ensure this work happened. So that if nothing else, the people going to the polls on the 7th of September would have the truth and have transparency and make a choice based on that. That seemed like the most important thing that we could do for people that had thrown their heart and soul into the party, volunteering, becoming members, spreading the word. It seemed to me that the least we could do was to stay, stay and get that work done, even if it was difficult. But over the course of that day, and there's varying statements already out there that that explain this, over the course of that day, it became quite clear that the independent review was never going to happen, certainly not before the election, that it would be conducted by one person internally and the National Council would be bypassed and receive one version of it and other people may be told the truth confidentially, but never to the public or to the Council. Oh, my God. And then there was the subversion of Kaz and I as campaign managers, part of the team, and this attempt to sort of lure people into this alternative power base that would bypass the council and the current campaign members that were problematic. Uh, so, yeah, suddenly it went from the majority of the council voting for one thing to happen, that not occurring, and then refusing to, to own that and to behave in the way that their values state publicly they aspire to. And, 
and that was that was really difficult because we were trying to actually behave in the way that the party stated publicly it, it would do in the Senate. And our feeling was, if you can't do that now, if you can't do that now, how are you going to do that in the Senate? And the further subversions that happened that day of, you know, the council was spoken about with contempt. Uh, it just became clear that this was going to be swept under the carpet. It wasn't going to be addressed. The constitution makes it impossible to remove anybody from the council without a unanimous vote for the next five years. And it then became clear to us that every time we would go out and speak to volunteers or to supporters or to the media and espouse these values, transparency, accountability and justice, we were not only going to be lying to our supporters, but we were lying to ourselves. So we resigned in the hope that we resigned in the hope that people would actually recognize that we were demonstrating those values. Because I believe that we deserve a new body politic and I believe that things can be done in a different way. Uh, and we needed to demonstrate a commitment to that for all the people who realised that this is about much more than one person or, or one election. Uh, so we, we resigned. <laughs>